Hey everybody and welcome back to week five of Football Fantasy. I'm your host Nancy Filippelli. By now you should know what you're doing so I don't have to talk to you like you're two years old. So let's start with a recap of week five. Atlanta Falcons at the Washington Redskins. RG3, who was forced to miss the end of the game due to a mild concussion, he only scored four fantasy points, so consider him day-to-day. -day. Alfred Morris, who I just picked up, says a lot about our league, continues to dominate the competition, rushing for 115 yards while averaging a ridiculous six yards per carry. He's becoming a must-start in all leagues. Santana Moss, who just had two catches, but one of them went for a 77-yard touchdown. Matt Ryan had a slow start, but he finished strong with 345 yards, two touchdowns, and 18 fantasy points. He was on my bench. Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. Jamal Charles with another solid performance. This time against the Baltimore Ravens defense. Charles went for 125 yards during the first half and finished with 161 yards and 16 points. Castle left the game with a concussion and was replaced by Brady Quinn. Some of the fans cheered, which I thought that was kind of hideous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, come on. And so some, <laughs> come on, man. So uh, Joe Flacco didn't play um, well this game either. He doesn't really play too well on the road. Flacco had six touchdowns in three home games, but only one touchdown on the road. Good news for Flacco owners. The Ravens host the Cowboys in week six, and we all know how the Cowboys defense is kind of struggling. Anquan Bolden had four receptions and 82 yards, and his second consecutive start Ray Rice rushed for over 100 yards for the third consecutive week as he continues to be one of the top backs in fantasy football. The Green Bay Packers at Indianapolis Colts. Packers offensive line is offensive. Still as horrible as it was that Monday night game when they gave up eight sacks in the first half of the game against the Seahawks. Remember that bad call? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can't forget that. Aaron Rodgers didn't have the time or rhythm to dominate for 60 minutes. He's still amazing and will throw like about 30 touchdowns or so, but don't expect anything close to 45 again like he did last year with the help he's, he's not getting from his boys. Damn. I know. I thought Jordy Nelson would uh, finally blow up this week, but he's, well, he's, he's definitely due, and he didn't. Randall Cobb and James Jones got big numbers this week. Jones is a good flex player right now, especially if Jennings – um, is still out with that in with that injury he had. Yeah, bad. It was pretty bad. Well, we'll talk more about that at the coaching show on Friday. Let's not forget Andrew Luck in this game. He has now become a must-start quarterback in fantasy. Makes me want to bomb that my Miami Dolphins could have had him. Sorry. I know. He needs to start over guys like Michael Vick, Philip Rivers, Tony Romo, Cam Newton, Joe Flacco, Ben Roethlisberger. All of those people. Philadelphia Eagles at Pittsburgh Steelers. Rashad Mendenhall by far has the best return performances compared to Ryan Williams and Adrian Peterson. Mendenhall got 16 fantasy points. The most disappointing performance came from Mike Wallace, who I about tracked down and body slammed into a burning building if he doesn't blow up soon. I had him on my starting roster for the last uh -oh. few weeks, and he hasn't done anything. He's, he's been pretty consistent and averaging about eight fantasy points. Michael Vick bores and scares me. He's becoming a liability. You need a quarterback who can protect the ball. 12 fantasy points from a quarterback just does not make the cut. LaShawn McCoy has been blowing up, but needs more opportunities to rack up more points. His consecutive weeks of 15 fantasy points shows the consistency. Continue to start him. I know I will. Buffalo Bills at San Francisco 49ers. Today's 49ers are crazy good. All those Joe Montana and Steve Young 49ers teams never equaled the 621 yards offense that Alex Smith and crew posted week five of the 2012 season. They were so dominant on both sides of the ball, they tripled the output of the Buffalo Bills who mustered up a measly 204 total yards with two turnovers. Same goes for their defense. Sit all your fantasy players when you see San Francisco is on their schedule. CJ Spiller, the top producing running back in the league before his injury was held to just three fantasy points as well as fellow running back Fred Jackson. Alex Smith scored 30 fantasy points. He was the best quarterback of the week and it wasn't even close. Smith isn't a must start every week though. Smith's favorite target, Michael Crabtree with 17 fantasy points. We've been hearing a lot about Crabtree getting ready to have his breakout week and this apparently was it. If you remember him from his Texas Tech days, then you know his talent is there. He's got some of the best hands in the league, and it's clear he's got the trust of his quarterback, especially considering he's one of the top receivers in the league when it comes to the, the third down receptions. Frank Gore, 
sad to say I passed on him several times during our draft day, has been averaging 13 points per game. He's kind of a big deal. On to Denver Broncos and New England Patriots. Peyton Manning lays all worries to rest with 31 out of 44 completions, 345 yards, and three touchdowns. I would like to point out the fact that I picked him up his rookie year and all the boys laughed at me. And then I made them all cry when they lost to a girl. Demarius Thomas still looks better than Eric Decker, even though I love Eric. We all know Obviously. I do. DT caught nine passes for 188 yards and a touchdown, and he's a must-start in all formats. Eric Decker catches a lot of short passes for the Broncos, but as long as Peyton Manning looks to him in the red zone, it really doesn't matter now, does it? Willis McGahee, who I have and depended on to blow up, only caught five balls for 51 yards on Sunday. Wes Welker is on pace for nearly 1,600 yards receiving, and I can't believe I let him slide two times in my Tuckopolis draft. Clearly, I had been drinking that day. <laughs> Rob Burkowski, <laughs> better blow up sooner. It's men's shoes and swimming with the fishes for him. I have family, if you know what I mean. Uh-oh. I sure do. Steven Ridley, a huge game against the Broncos, going over 100 yards again, but a fourth quarter fumble could mean his touch is uh, limited in Seattle. Look for Brandon Bolden to get more balls. Which brings us to Titans at Vikings, week five. The Minnesota Vikings continue to steamroll opponents, beating the Tennessee Titans by a score of 30 to seven to the delight of the home crowd at Mall of America Field. But not to us here in Tennessee and the Titans fans. Minnesota's defense was indomitable, forcing two turnovers and holding Chris Johnson to a measly 24 points, I'm sorry, 24 yards and 15 carries. In Jake Locker's absence, veteran quarterback Matt Hasselback struggled slightly, completing just 26 out of 43 passes for 200 yards and one touchdown and one interception. It was so bad at the end that the third string quarterback, Rusty Smith, got in for a little action on the fourth quarter. The Tennessee Titans fell to 1-4 and four on the season and will travel home to host the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thursday night, week six, where I hope that they will do good and win their game. I have complete faith in them. All right, we're going to talk about the injuries now. First, let's start with the Titans. And uh, Shakira Shellac has our information. Yeah, just call me whatever you want. <laughs> Sharka. <sighs> Shara is my name. We're going to talk about Kenny Britt. He hurt his ankle. And he, did. uh, he didn't he didn't play last week, and yeah. he didn't practice Monday. So he is going to play though Thursday, right? They're he's expected he, to play Thursday he's against expected the Steelers. To play. He's questionable, but I have a good feeling that he's going to take the field. And Colin McCarthy also isn't injured anymore, which is um, kind of exciting. The Bears they got 29 fantasy points. I'm super excited about that. Houston's doing great too. Five and zero. Oh. I think they're the yeah. only five and zero oh team this week. We have Will Witherspoon coming Friday. on the show on Friday to talk about um, how some, awesome he is. To talk about how awesome he is. He's so interesting <laughs> and amazing, and I love him. He's a dear friend. And um, come watch him talk to us and entertain us. Linebacker for the Titans, amazing. in case you didn't know. He certainly is. He's amazing. Thanks for watching. Thanks. See you soon. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis.